Welcome to our brand new series, Bollywood Talkies with Outlook. I'm your host, Mitrajit Bhattacharya, and today I will be speaking to one of the most gifted filmmakers of our generation, Neeraj Pandey. We'll talk about his journey of making it big in the Hindi movie industry. Welcome, Neeraj. Thank being you, thank you, Mitrajit. Thank, thanks for being my first guest on Bollywood Talkies with Outlook. Pleasure. So how is the lockdown treating you? Treating me no different from uh, all of us. Uh, trying to make the most of it. Uh, trying to spend time with family like like most of us are doing. And uh, yeah, catching up on a lot of pending uh, work and uh, just about that, yeah. So just before the lockdown was announced, you had a major release in Special Ops that went on to become one of the most loved shows on the OTT uh, platforms, uh, one of the shows from India. Uh, how was the experience of creating content for television after so many years, though the format is quite different this time? Ah, it was wonderful. Um, I, I, actually, it felt like homecoming in so many ways. Uh, you know, this this it's a very exciting format. I remember doing uh, this kind of content when we were uh in early 2000 maybe uh, or late 1990s when i just come to bombay uh there were these uh, a lot of these programs are uh, in the standalone band category that we used to call it at that point of time which were essentially one-offs 45 minutes two hour specials and stuff like that and uh, the the freedom that you enjoy uh, in this format is that you can tell uh, stories which are risky for the film format and uh, also the length you can choose the length that you want uh, in fact it's better than television in that manner because we don't have to customize everything to fit say like 40 minutes 35 minutes and 21 minutes and all that you can your episode lengths may vary your subjects may be more far more risky so uh, i i really was looking forward to this experience and uh, this was a big show for hotstar and us uh, both in terms of the, the the scale and the magnitude of the show and uh, uh, also the fact that it was coming from an indian production house uh, we are very satisfied with the output and we are we are blessed to have this kind of a response from the audience uh, so uh, essentially coming from a background where uh, we strongly feel that whatever that we make is essentially for the audience first and then anyone and uh, the, the the way it has been embraced and loved by the audiences gives us a lot of encouragement to pursue similar stories and uh, work harder so i was checking out the imdb ratings for all the eight episodes of your uh, of the series and okay. some of them were actually actually clocking more than nine. So, mm -hmm. uh, are you planning season two now? I mean, what what's the scene now? There there are some rumors. <laughs> uh, we are in talks, uh, uh, and essentially we were all waiting for how the response uh, to the series would be, and then take a call from there. So, uh, right down we, right now we are just talking over the phone, trying to figure out how to take this forward. Nothing is firmed up as yet, but uh, we are obviously setting it up as a franchisee in our minds, and uh, that that's what we'll be looking at. Let's see how how life pans out in in terms of our schedules and uh, in terms of our commitments, which have gotten pushed right now uh, because of this situation. So uh, we'll wait and uh, come up uh, with an announcement very shortly. So, fun question. How come uh, no Mr. Kher this time? Like, did you not write a character for him or did he not have time? What happened? <laughs> uh, Mr. Kher uh, was in the US. He, he was in New York shooting his own series. Uh, but having said that, it's always a pleasure to work with him. And uh, uh, no, there was, frankly speaking, there was not uh, a part for him in this one. And uh, I would like to cast him only when I know that there's substantial uh, meat to offer in in terms of a in terms of a role, and uh, he'll he can only improve on whatever he has to deliver from the last time that we worked together. So uh, I would rather wait than rush him into a uh, into a half baked scenario. Yeah. 
Okay, let's uh, rewind a bit. We know you're, uh, you are from um, Howrah and growing up in a completely non-filmy environment those days, did you even dream of making it so big of, uh, in uh, Bollywood? Maybe in class nine, class 10, did you even dream? Those days you're not dreaming actually, are you? I mean, in terms of what you want to do with your life, it's, it's far more carefree and uh, uh, you, you basically just are having fun. I, I don't uh, recall uh, being too ambitious or even at that point of time, uh, uh, had a slight creative bent of mind, loved sports. That's how I, I recall those years. And uh, I love films. I, I love the, the storytelling bit. I, I love the fact that, you know, uh, you could make different genres. You could have song, dance, routines, etc., etc. And plus, growing up in Calcutta, you're exposed to uh, far more different kind of cinema. And uh, at the same time, consuming whatever the Hindi market was offering you. So uh, I was blessed that way to just uh, find my liking in a subconscious way. And uh, then uh, just figuring out that maybe I have a career in this and then taking that plunge uh, and then eventually doing what I loved uh, doing. Yeah. So my, so my follow up question. So when did you have the calling finally? I would believe somewhere around uh, uh, 95, 96 when I was just uh, coming out of college. Yeah. And that uh, was, it was around that time that. Uh, I used to watch a lot of movies uh, as is, but uh, figuring out that, yes, uh, you know, this is something that I want to do in my life, uh, whether it was writing and direction. And these are the only two things that I wanted to do. Uh, it was pretty clear about that. There was no uh, accident there. I wanted to write and I wanted to direct. Since uh, you are talking about uh, writing, I'll pick up the first uh, audience question. Uh, there is a uh, there is Jay Varma from Pune and Devmanlo Banerjee from Chennai. They have hmm. their questions pretty similar, so I've clubbed them together. Where do you find inspiration to write great thrillers like a Wednesday? Where do you get the inspiration from? From life and whatever is happening around us. Uh, that that's uh, always been the case. Uh, I, I read a lot, so it could uh, and write from uh, our daily newspaper to novels to non-fiction. Uh, fiction, anything and everything. I mean, I can read practically. Uh, if I'm, uh, if I have my way, I could, I could just read a lot more than what I read these days. Uh, it comes from observing uh, what's going around in my life. Uh, it could be an old article from somewhere. Uh, just navigating through internet at times also helps. You know, you, one follow-up article after another, and it's an endless chain, and some link or the other leads up. Uh, to a totally new unknown world. I like to explore that and uh, indirectly, directly, I'll have to credit them as the source for uh, the way my uh, inspiration comes about. Uh, so Wednesday was uh, essentially uh, inspired from the fact that uh, it, at that point of time, I clearly remember most of us were living in solid fear as to what had happened after the train blast. And uh, this was the generic reaction that uh, I, I found that pe people were going through. And it came, like I said, many a times inspiration is from life. That that was the case in Wednesday, that it, it just came from the emotion that I was going through from uh, people around me uh, were going through. And uh, it was maybe that collective outburst, that collective angst, anger, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but yes, it, that was the, the tone of the film. That was the story of the film. For an outsider like me, uh, we feel that to make it in the movie industry, you need to network, you need to go to parties, you need to go to award shows. You don't, <laughs> you do none of them. So is it uh, a deliberate strategy to uh, kind of uh, avoid distraction? No, it's to each his own. Uh, I, I, I don't see... Uh, anything wrong with it? I, 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 I would just say to each his own, uh, uh, to each his or her own rather. Uh, it, it entirely depends on the individual. Uh, if they're comfortable with that route, uh, fair enough. There's nothing wrong with it. 
I personally don't uh, believe in that, and uh, that's the reason I, I I don't indulge in it. It saves me a lot of time uh, and gets me to do what I really really want, and that's where my comfort, that's where my kick is. And uh, yeah, I mean I I I can't castigate anyone who's doing it, but at the same time I don't see it as a recipe. So all your movies, your dialogues. Uh, are written in a very very local lingo and they have a lasting impression they leave or they always leave a lasting impression uh, could you just take us through the process of how to write easy and impactful dialogues particularly like asli power dil mein hoti hai aur aapke ghar mein cockroach aata hai to aap kya karte hain rapport sahab so uh, these are all uh, iconic dialogues which we remember after almost 8 10 years of you having written them uh, how do you write such easy uh, dialogues i mean they are not really ham handed they are not really they are very ordinary yeah they are very ordinary yeah and they are very simple uh, i i would completely agree with you uh, easy comes after difficult i believe uh, you you have to understand that what seems to be easy would have been uh, very difficult at one point of time but the more that you are at it in terms of your skill in terms of your craft uh, it tends to become smoother uh, it becomes more rounded it becomes much easier and uh, that that's what happened to me i i believe that you know uh, when i got into it it wasn't this free flowing uh, it it takes a lot of uh, hard work uh, and uh, hard work with a lot of interest i believe It, it shouldn't seem like hard work, and once you start enjoying that process, once you're enjoying that entire journey, uh, it, I believe it starts falling in place. So, uh, if it seems uh, easy right now, that means that uh, I have really enjoyed my process of writing it uh, throughout my uh, early formative years, and uh, now it seems uh, seamless and it seems easy. uh that's what i would uh, recommend that if if you are at it if you're working uh, hard then have fun with it uh and uh, don't leave it to the thing that yes it's it's a big tedious process for me uh the moment you start doing that you'll start taking yourself seriously and then it's a domino effect one thing goes wrong after another but as long as you're having fun with it i think that you're in a good space that that's what i would say in this regard but is dialogue writing very different uh, in the sense is the process of writing dialogue still done in a staccato manner than writing a screenplay or it does it come together how how, how does it work i can tell you how i work uh, uh, for me the process is is very linear i i write the screenplay and the dialogues uh, in, in the manner of the script so uh, i'll if there's an instruction i do it in uh, english and uh, the screen play instruction and then go on the dialogue bit which will be done uh, in hindi and hindi english if it is so and uh, but i go linear and uh, it's it's just that y- you you put yourself in those situations which any writer does there's no rocket science to it you try and uh, give them a voice of their own to each of the characters that you're dealing with in a particular sequence and uh, then uh, put yourself in their shoes uh, at every given point of time and that's the very very basic method that i follow and uh, that's how i work okay so next question is very different uh, see we are living in a highly uh, polarized political environment how come you never share your political views on any platforms uh, and stay away from it what's the take on it well i mean i would i i prefer being a political at least on platforms and at least on uh, uh, but when i'm interacting with people uh, i have very strong views about uh, most of the stuff that goes around the reason i i uh, i don't share it on uh, maybe a plat- plat- uh, public platform is because uh, i'm not on social and uh, it's not as simple as putting a view, point of view over there uh, and then 
the the matter ends you know you, you you need to get into a conversation with that once you put out an opinion then the process of defending it and then uh, you know now with the circus that goes around you have to half the time uh, end up you know trying to position that actually i meant to say this i don't think i have the either the appetite or the energy to go through that process where uh, you know you end up talking and then defending what what you spoke about and then that whole uh, jing bang that goes with it but yes uh, i mean i i love to voice my opinion to people that that matter to me and whose opinion matter to me and uh, i i prefer to keep it that way also the fact that uh, uh, putting an opinion out uh, is is not the end of it uh, then the journey starts so that 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 for me is uh, is actually too taxing it, it, i i can't afford my time on that so your next magnum opus you're working on is chanakya so after a spy thriller you are moving into chanakya first is what did attract you to write and tell a story on a so well known character of chanakya and how are you preparing for it because you know you will be subjected to all kind of scrutiny because it's 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 a it's like it's a character which we have read from a history book so first is what did attract you to do a story and tell a story of chanakya all over again and how are you preparing for it well uh, correction chanakya's story has never been told on film uh, it has been told as a television series and maybe in vernacular in the hindi film uh, domain that chanakya's story has never been told so uh, that obviously was a huge magnet that we are trying to touch upon something that has not been done before that has not been explored uh, enigmatic figure uh, and uh, possibly we don't know as much as we would we think we know about him and as much as we should know him uh, somebody who's uh, relevant today after two, 2300 years maybe i mean i mean he must have uh, some vision right and uh, that's exactly what what god is going and this project has been in the works since the last 5 6 years i guess and uh, uh we got about chatting and then uh, sporadically you know meeting up people uh, including dr devedi and uh, that's how it started shaping up about 5 6 years back uh but i needed to read up on him i needed to prepare myself in terms of what what's what's the history of, uh, of that time etc etc and that's the reason we went through that process me and my entire team for that matter uh it's not just about uh, one department so all the departments had to come together and invest their time in in the material so uh, that process started about one and a half two years back and uh, yes now now we are good to go on that so uh, primarily to answer your question the fact that the story has never been told uh, and the story is uh, about a person who had that sort of vision Uh, which is still applicable on a day to day basis over here today i mean he deserves a story who who else who else for that matter so have you have you been traveling a lot to uh, uh, to do the research yeah not now of course but uh, yes we did that we we basically about uh, like i said about uh, a year and a half back or something we started doing that then there was a core team that i believe should be on one page and uh, Uh, all the hods we used to we we did travel together uh, to all these places where we felt uh, we needed to and uh, in order to understand that era better and understand to get to uh, understand our history better so yes we did that we traveled the length and breadth of this country and uh, uh, museums that they became very important for us so uh, there is the calcutta museum of course uh, the indian museum at calcutta that that became a huge uh, uh, hugely important place for us to to visit the new museum in, in patna is uh, is brilliant i i would recommend that to anyone it's international standards and uh, one should visit that 
Uh, we were very skeptical about it, but uh, the moment we made that trip, we actually thanked uh, God that we did that. And uh, similarly, we went to a lot of other places in order to prep for this film and uh, in order to prep for the script. So that was the process that, yes, we did follow. And you are partnering a new new superstar, Ajay Devgan, on this for the first time. So uh, anything you would like to share like about how how you plan to take this relationship forward? <laughs> There's, I mean, we just have to work. That's how it goes forward. <laughs> uh, Ajay was uh, probably the best actor to play uh, Chanakya in my head. And I'm, I'm glad that he was as excited as uh me and us and uh he he jumped at the the idea of uh playing chanakya so uh wonderfully gifted actor i don't have to endorse him i mean he's his body of work speaks for himself and amazingly clued in and uh the fact that uh we are getting to work together on this one it's looking forward to that experience super how do you handle pressures of expectation considering wednesday special chubby's baby ms honey they are all epic films so how do you every time you go onto the field how do you handle the pressures of expectation by not thinking about it by not thinking about it and start afresh yes. that that that's okay. the key i mean you you don't think about what you've done uh, you you just start from scratch because every film is a new film uh, your reputation from your from your last film is not going to help it. it that experience is going to help you, and uh, that's what we believe in. That, that the last film is done and dusted. Uh, it, you, you, I have a uh, sort of a uh, a bigness take with every film, every project that we undertake. It. I'm. I'm I, I like to be as uh, inquisitive as possible about it. That's the reason I'd like to dwell in different genres. So uh, the sports biopic was an example. The historical is an example. Uh, so that that that's the way. You you don't think about all these things that what you uh, achieved and all that and move on to every film on its merit. In fact, you've just answered partly the question of the next uh, audience. Retain, Retain Kumar from Goa actually had asked this question that what made you shift to uh, uh, directing a biopic like MS uh, after doing uh, after kind of doing all those spy thrillers. So <laughs> I, I guess you have answered that that you know it excites you to try out new. Yeah, ones. I mean uh, primarily you're thinking of yourself as a storyteller uh, more than anything else. So uh, I I believe that. Uh, a storyteller should be uh, equipped and ready and agnostic towards formats, towards durations. That's the reason I, I would prefer to do a 30 seconder with as much enthusiasm as uh, a short film, like we did Ouch. Uh, That's right. Uh, and uh, it's, it's a 14, 15 minute film, I think. Uh, and different genres, uh, Special Ops is another. Uh, narrative it, it's a it's a seven hour film if you look at it uh, in one manner and uh, uh, fully enjoyed that experience because it's something different you you write differently you uh, break the story in, in different smaller units and still engage the audience that that's a challenge so uh, i think that's what excites us stepping out of your comfort zone is very crucial for me uh, uh, if i have sort of done something in in a, in, a, in a particular genre, until unless I have a different take or something terribly exciting in that in that same genre, I don't like to uh, dwell in it. But uh, keep looking for uh, for newer things, keep looking for newer genres, and uh, sort of uh, grow. That growth becomes very important. So I think uh, talking about web series and talking about your uh, latest foray into web series, do you see? Uh, we the indian producers currently we are ready to deliver the next narcos for the spy money heist or uh, homeland from india are we ready of course uh, no shred of doubt i mean if you look at it the it's not just uh, uh, the matter of content it's also about 
the fact that you know you should be working with those kind of budgets it's very easy to say that okay uh, you know why are we not making something like avengers on film uh, it's a function of two things a uh, the skill set which should be groomed over years uh, in a certain direction and all of that and uh, the ability to break the ceiling again and again uh, we have not been able to manage it uh, successfully all the time but i'm optimistic that yes with newer stories and uh, newer formats i think that we'll be able to push those boundaries in time to come and uh, yeah I, i'm i'm pretty sure that you know in terms of content we'll be delivering uh, very interesting content in, in times to come so there is uh, another audience question asim srivastava from mumbai he asked that you know uh, do you write scripts keeping actors in mind and do you ever change the script script to suit a particular actor after he or she has been signed on no i don't write uh, scripts with actors in mind that would be uh, a mistake in my opinion uh, okay. you're already committing the first mistake in that process uh you should uh, write and approach a script solely on the merit of the story per se and uh, dictate what the story demands write what the story demands and uh, once you are through that process you will have ample time because once you've cast a certain actor you will obviously have the opportunity to go and tweak certain things and all that not change mind you tweak uh, uh, to that actor's strength uh, whoever that you cast you have that that space and liberty to go about that that's the process i follow that i invariably end up doing the script and then uh, uh, once i have cast uh, and while we are reading we are always improvising we are uh, we have that room that elbow room that uh, to take that particular script in the direction where you know that we can tap into that particular star slash actors strength uh you will always get that time but when you are working on an idea at that point of time it's imperative that you uh solely chase the merit of that idea rest can follow uh, at least that's the process i follow so uh my next question is a very uh, a question i have often asked you and i'll ask you again when do <laughs> we see you working on galib danger and the second part of this is uh will it be now a web series or do you see this as a double uh, uh movie kind of a thing because it's a long story to tell i don't know i i wish i had an answer for that and i i would love to do ali benji but somehow things didn't fall in place uh uh those couple of occasions when i wanted to uh, you know work uh, on it uh for some reason or the other and then obviously you're doing certain things that that keep you away from uh certain other things so uh i i don't know when i I'll, i'll be going back to it i also have no answer whether i i would be ending up uh making a web series with that material or doing it as a two part feature uh <clears throat> both the mediums have their own merits the story is uh uh is conducive to both the formats so i think it will be a function of what what i am doing at that point of time when i pick it up again and uh, uh depends on the people that are that that one can rally around that project uh the collaborators be it crew members cast members stuff like that are collaborators so it's actually a function of two or three things that uh, that we'll see i i, I mean as and when we start working on it so i'm afraid i don't have an answer right now on this one the next one is something which is not my question so much but it is probably the 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 most asked question around you is why have you shelved crack and when uh, what's the scene with crack actually crack got shelved because the script didn't turn out the way uh, i wanted it to and uh, uh was not happy with the script and uh, uh then obviously we all moved on to different things uh and it got pushed on the back burner 
uh, it's not going to happen in the near future for sure. I don't know uh, when will it happen. But uh, if I can summon that kind of curiosity, that kind of, uh, uh, you know, will to sort of chase it again and, and you know, complete the script, maybe we'll have a look at it. But as of, as of now, as we speak, I think uh, it's shared. Uh, the, primary re the primary reason being that, yes, I was not happy with the way the script had shaped up. Okay. Your movies always have a very large canvas, uh, shot across exciting locales like London, Istanbul, Cairo, Baku, Akaba, Kuala Lumpur. Do you ch choose which countries to visit or do you actually write the script and then travel? First I choose and then I write. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's not that always, uh, it's not the case always. I, I feel that uh, I am fond of travel, but uh, I mean, it entirely depends on the story. Witness didn't allow uh, or didn't need us to travel. We didn't travel. It's a story set in one day in, in the city of Bombay, uh, Mumbai now. And that's how, how the film got... Uh, how, many, sorry, how, many, how many days did you take to shoot uh, Wednesday? The entire... 26. 26, 26. days. Yeah. So Wednesday you, was you, probably 26 days. Okay. So coming back to your travel, so you're saying it depends on the script. Yeah, it depends on the script. Like uh, again, uh, when we were doing Dhoni, we, we were, you know, uh, in the interiors of the country. We were in Jharkhand, Rachi, uh, we were in Kharagpur, we were in Jamshedpur. Uh, I, I loved every bit of it. Uh, the story of baby uh, pushes you in that direction where, you know, it's, it's an international espionage. Uh, film so obviously you're talking about international terrorism and stuff like that obviously the canvas will spread but chambis doesn't uh, take you outside of the country because there was no need and we didn't so frankly speaking it depends on the subject that that we are chasing uh, i would love to do intimate stories and and that's always been the case that we we want to focus on a different kind of kinds of content and uh, it, like Chanakya is not going to be uh, that kind of a film again where you know you're traveling to uh, these places and stuff like that so primarily I believe that it's all about the, the story and the demands of it. Sure now there is also a burning question which we always had that you know in India uh, uh, we if the quality of movies suffer it's because we don't really value our writers now with this uh, focus coming back on web series and stuff like that, where writing is actually the center point of uh, of, of of creating this uh, new series, are you satisfied that the writers are getting uh, their uh, share uh, which they deserved long back? And how do you get the focus back onto writing? Well, it's definitely better for the writers and, and uh, I hope that they make uh, good use of this opportunity and deliver uh, stuff where they can actually end up dictating uh, what they would like in terms of work conditions, etc, etc. Because that can only happen if the writers deliver. Just getting to this point where there's a huge demand for content and writers are getting employed is not the end of it, I think. Uh, once the writers start delivering that kind of material and people start making creating that kind of stuff uh, which is a cut above the rest is where uh, we would ideally like to be and uh, it is a function of time also i believe that once we once the writers are allowed that kind of time in order to uh, to come together there's a wonderfully fancy term these days called writers room uh, which uh, which people huddle and they write. I hope they write good in that room, and uh, they keep up coming with stuff, great stuff. And uh, if they keep on delivering good stuff, then I believe that it will be the best thing that can happen to the writing community. And uh, the day that uh, writers start dictating over here in terms of what the content uh, deserves is is going to be. Uh, one of the best days I feel for content creation over here in this country. We are still bogged down by the fact that, you know, who can you get in this particular series? Uh, who can you get in this particular film? 
uh, the, I understand the, the 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 fight, but it can't be the norm. Uh, I mean, that it can't be just that basic, you know, hurdle all the time. Uh, so I, I just hope that you know they get uh, they produce stuff and then they get what they deserve. That that's what I would have to say in this. Event. So I'll just end by asking you one word answers, just a couple of them. Your favorite city in the world? Favorite city? Oops, uh, I was not prepared for this actually. Uh, has to be Delhi. Delhi, okay. Favorite actor? Favorite actor? Uh, now, yesterday, uh, no, anyone? No, it's open, it's open to you. Mm. <laughs> uh, the tens of them, I mean, I like them for different reasons. Uh, uh, okay, I'll give you two. I'll say Charles Chaplin. Charlie Chaplin. Favorite director, not you. Favorite director, Billy Wilder. someone other. Not me, of course. Billy Wilder. Favorite film? Uh, right now, top of my mind, uh, it would be a Frank Capra film. It's a Wonderful Life. Thank you, Neeraj. It was lovely talking to you. Thank you. Look Thank you. Forward, look forward to see you, seeing you again soon after the lockdown is over. Thank you. Thank very you much. so much. Thank you so much. All the best, Patricia. Thank you.